Okay, let's go ahead and switch gears here and get right to the demo. We're going to show you how to take advantage of the NetFlow capabilities on the 3750 and 3560 Catalyst switches. I'm going to switch over to our live action GUI. Okay, there we go. This is our live action QoS product. It has a lot of capabilities for managing QoS, but it also is able to access other features from the iOS like NetFlow, for example. So what we have here is a topology with a number of devices. And um, Live Action actually auto-discovers these devices and then ties together the interfaces and networks in the topology view. You can move these devices and interfaces around, get the topology the way you want it. And what we do when you pull the devices in, we immediately start pulling NetFlow status information for things like uh, device status, um, interface status, and in addition to that, we also provide some other inf useful information. So if you look at these icons that we've overlaid on this router, you can see here there's a little icon with an A. That's indicating there's an ACL on this interface. And the um, you can see on, with these arrows here, the box around the arrow is indicating there's a QoS policy on that interface. And then we also report the bandwidth for the inbound and outbound portions of the interface. There's also color coding. So the orange on this particular device is indicating that there's drops and we also report by color things like CPU and, and uh, memory utilization. Now what we do with this topology is we then overlay other types of information. Um, for example, NetFlow. We can uh, overlay the NetFlow information onto this topology. And what we do is we stitch the flows together from device to device and we provide this uh, path from end to end. So I'm going to step back here and explain to you what we have in our network. So we have a branch office connected to the HQ. And um, at the branch we have a 3560 attached to an 1841. And then at the headquarters we have a 3750 attached to a 2811 WAN router. So I've overlaid the flows here and you're able to refresh this information on the system view. And we can see how the information is stitched across the network. So we can actually see where the flow goes from end to end. So for example, this flow started on the right, flowing through the WAN, and then ending up on this end station here on the left in the uh, branch office. So over here, we got this little cloud network at the HQ and then the traffic is terminating at this this device in the uh, the branch office. Now the other information uh, we can provide with NetFlow is in addition to this is we color, color code the flows in this case by DSCP so you really helpful for you know discovering trust issues in your network where you may have a, a trust issue at a, at a boundary so if you need to get more information, you can dive into particular device level view to get more detailed information. So you can see there's a number of flows here on this 3750. And um, scroll down a little bit, scroll up. So I, what I've done here is I've sorted by SSRC, which is an RTP number that's assigned to each stream. So it's just signed by RTP to each stream. And then this is used as an identifier. And then along with the other performance monitoring information, we get back statistics like jitter, uh, min max, jitter, packet loss, and, and other media related um, information. And then in addition to that, uh, we have other information, of course, like IP address, port number, and then also media bit rate is what we're seeing here and then um, you can scroll across see some of the other information so you can see there's other 
non media net related fields like MAC address. So if you were exporting MAC addresses in VLAN from Flexible NetFlow, we would actually be able to show you that there. In this case, I don't have that set up, so we're not actually seeing that in these particular fields. And then if we scroll over all the way on the right here, there's uh, some of the other performance monitoring fields that are related to stream information like the media packet count, media octet counts, and all the information is here and you can move these columns around so I've actually pulled the ones that are of interest to me over to the front but you can pull other ones around as you see fit as you see fit now if we were troubleshooting a particular issue you may need to take advantage of filters so if you have a lot of information that you need to um, scroll through you can actually create a display filter like what I'm doing here so right clicking on the particular stream that you're interested in then selecting that option so you can see the RTP SSRC the IP address of this particular stream and that's now in my custom filter uh, that I've have selected here and so I can also change it to other ones um, I can also customize it through this particular window here I can change the different fields I can type in a different IP address if I'm interested in that and then I can choose which um, field to match on in this case I got 192.0.2.4 and I can choose which destination or source address or, or whatever field I may want to match on and then we also have the ability to go back in time so to speak so we actually store all the flows into a database, a proprietary time series database that we've developed for live action and we can actually pull up that information in a um, historical view. Now the proprietary time series database is really very highly optimized for uh, storing and retrieving NetFlow information. So you'll see a lot of other NetFlow tools use SQL which could be a bottleneck at high flow rates but we've actually optimized our system using a time series database so that you can store all the flows without uh, aggregating so we can recall information and you can see here these are actually the individual flows and we aren't doing any aggregation at all and then you can go back in time you can scroll use a scroll bar to scroll through a particular day through like a 24-hour period and then you can move to that particular time that you may be um, doing an investigation of some kind of issue and pinpoint that. You can also use the filters so you can choose the custom filter that I created earlier and um, isolate the information just to that particular flow. So you can see here this is the, uh, the stream that we identified um, using that other filter. So you can get some pretty useful information for historical forensic purposes. Okay. So let's back out of this. Okay, now another thing when you're troubleshooting things that happened in the past, you, uh, you may actually need to reproduce the problem. And there's actually a Cisco capability called IPSLA that can help you do this. And through IPSLA, there's now a video version of this synthetic traffic generation. It's called IPSLA Video Operation or IPSLA VO. And what it does is it allows you to create synthetic traffic from the Cisco devices themselves. In this case, I have a telepresence IPSLA video stream that I'm generating. You can get information about statistics. And through live action, you can actually configure these, these tests on the devices and um, really have a very useful capability for doing an assessment or measuring the impact of the video or reproducing a problem. Okay, let's step back and go to our topology view. And let's say we had an end user complaining about problems with his video session. So he's experienced a lot of pixelation and blockiness and dropouts and we need to troubleshoot that problem. So this particular end user is in the branch office. It's 192.0.2.4. And the first thing we we're going to do is go to the access switch that that end station is connected to. So you can see here, 
I'm going to update the uh, the polling information to the uh, the latest set of measurements, and you can see here we've gotten the re most recent data, and we're telling us we're seeing about 23% uh, packet loss on this particular stream. So this is obviously a big problem, and we can understand why the user is experiencing problems with their stream. So let's let's go ahead and um, step back to the topology view and let's investigate the problem and look a little bit um, further into the network upstream from this device to the WAN router and observe the uh, performance there. So let me update the polling information again and and grab the current data and now performance monitoring calculates metrics over a 30 second window so it collects data over this 30 second period and, and in between these periods we won't actually get any updated net flow information from the device so it's actually calculating jitter information you know doing those other performance measurements packet loss and it, and then when it gets all that information over the 30 second window it can actually export that to the collector and then um, report the information back where we can get a get more of it. Okay, there we go. So there's we've picked up the stream here and in this case I still have my custom filter on and it's isolating it to this particular stream that we're interested in and you can see there's still a high level of packet loss here. So what we're going to do is step back again and let's just go to the source of the stream. This, the, the access switch connected to the source and that's this 3750 and let's take a look and see if the problem is here. So uh, this is the first hop in the in the media stream and let's observe to see if we have any problems on this particular device. So it's going to take a little while to collect the, the flow data. So okay there we go. So we picked up a stream here and this is the, the correct stream and we can see there's zero packet loss. So we know the problem is between the 3750 and the branch router that uh, we were looking at earlier. So let's take a look at the topology again. Now this particular device is um, colored orange so indicating to us there may be a problem there so that was a clue and we could have started right there with our troubleshooting but I wanted to show you how you can use the performance monitoring information both upstream and downstream and see what's going on. So I'm going to switch over to the uh, QoS view and get some detailed information of performance on a per class basis. So we have a QoS policy. I'm going to switch this view to uh, the class class view. So we're looking at um, QoS before and after or performance before and after the QoS policy is applied and you can see here we're getting some um, drops okay there we go we're getting some drops on our video emission critical traffic indicating the the yellow color so I'm going to take a look at the class class drops view so in this case we're showing QoS before policies applied on the top and then we're showing the um, drop information on a per class basis on the bottom view so why don't we uh, go ahead and take a look at our QoS policy. So in live action you can actually um, we actually have a policy editor and we can view the policy settings and see what the queuing settings are, the reserve bandwidth all on a per class basis and we can actually make adjustments to this. So we can see here the uh, the interactive video traffic is set to 10% of reserve bandwidth and it's probably not enough for this situation so maybe we rolled out interactive desktop video conferencing and the number of users who are using it has actually increased so we're going to need to crank this number up so let's go ahead and do that now the other thing with live action is it actually has the ability to tell you if the settings you're going to push down to the device are oversubscribing the bandwidth for that particular link so that's actually what's going on here so we've set some numbers in here that are going to oversubscribe the bandwidth so let's go ahead and back that down now I could have actually changed some of the other settings like the bulk data but what I'm going to do is just go with this value here 
and save it down to the device. Now there's a couple of ways we can validate this. So what I'm going to do is go back to the uh, topology view and the uh, 3560, which was the axis switch at the end, at the end point, and um, take a look at the NetFlow performance monitoring data here and see what we got. So we're going to get the latest pulled data. So we're waiting for the next uh, polling cycle to update. Okay, there we go. So we can see here the um, the packet loss percent packet loss has gone down quite a bit from 20 something percent down to about 1%. So that's a pretty big improvement. Now we can um, also validate this on some of the other devices. So I'm going to go to the uh, upstream router and get and validate that the problem is is fixed also in this device okay okay there we go so we got um, we got some updated info we could see here the packet loss is down to 0.16 percent so that's a good sign so at this point we validated that the um, by performance monitoring we validated the problem went away what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the QoS view on the 2011 and take a look at the interactive video um, class to see if there's any drops being experienced there. So we can see there are, are no drops, virt virtually no drops that we're seeing on the interactive video. We do still have some on the mission critical traffic, so you know we may want to go back to the policy editor and make some edits there. So the other thing I wanted to show you was um, in performance monitoring, I mentioned earlier that you have the C3PL format with the class ma maps and policy maps. Live Action has the ability to allow you to edit and create those class maps. So let's take a look at the 3750. And I've already enabled, if you remember, performance monitoring. Let's go to the classes. And here's that wide open um, class map that I was using has an ACL in there and you could actually at this point if you wanted to modify to create, a, create a new class and make those settings in this graphical format you could save that down to the device so it's a really handy feature for fine-tuning your performance monitoring setting now related to that is the is an ACL editor and this is also very useful so if you remember in that class map we were actually using an ACL and you can see that here so you're able to edit the ACL uh, add rules create new rules move them around move them up and down apply them to interfaces and really allow you to fine-tune the classification for the perfmon settings to really zero in so that that pretty much wraps up the demo so what we did is we showed you some useful capabilities that are now supported on the Catalyst uh, 3750 and 3560 and um, these capabilities performance monitoring are being enabled through NetFlow so you're actually able to get some NetFlow capability and uh, what we're going to do now is go ahead and switch it back over to the presentation for uh, Q&A